You know what I need in my life? A personal hashtag, like Cool Chris or Chris Mentum. Actually, neither of those are cool at all. I know. If you have been on the political internet in the past year or so, you've almost certainly come across the name Andrew Yang, because, well, he and his legion of online fans are everywhere, pushing his 2020 candidacy for the Democratic presidential nomination. How? Why? And does anyone in the offline world know or care about Yang and his candidacy? Well, you sure do have a lot of questions. And good thing for you, I have a lot of answers. Let's start with the basics. Yang is a 44-year-old entrepreneur from New York. He started a company called Venture for America that aimed to link up recent college graduates with startup companies looking for young and inexpensive employees. He filed to run for president in 2020, way back in November 2017. Quick sidebar, Yang wasn't the first Democrat to announce for president. No, that was former Congressman of Maryland John Delaney who beat Yang to the punch, announcing a 2020 bid in the summer of 2017. Yes, 2017. Now, for a long time, that's a lot of O's, not many people paid any attention to Yang's candidacy. After all, there are more than 250 Democrats running for president in 2020, most of whom you have not heard of and you will never hear of. Then, in February, Yang had a moment. He went on Joe Rogan's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, and everything changed. Or at least people, especially online, started to pay him some attention. Of appearing on Rogan's podcast, which is hugely popular on the internet, Yang wrote at the time, quote, Joe's studio is very impressive. It has a full gym, a flotation sensory deprivation tank, a couple of cars, a life-size werewolf, a mixed martial arts facility, and tons of art and memorabilia. I called it a man hanger, end quote. A flotation sensory deprivation tank? Boy, do I need one of those. Suddenly, Yang was everywhere. Okay, he wasn't everywhere, but he was somewhere. Somewhere. As the Washington Post noted at the time, quote, after the Rogan podcast, Yang's Twitter followers jumped eightfold, going from roughly 34,000 to 287,000 in a little over a month. Online fans started creating thousands of memes and videos on Facebook, Instagram, and other social media, spreading his campaign further. Suddenly, Yang backers started to refer to themselves as the Yang Gang, and to communicate online using the hashtag Yang Gang. Supporters would yell, math, seriously, math, at Yang when he started talking about data at his rallies. In an online video updating people on his campaign in June, Yang put on a math hat his signature campaign merchandise, which is, let's be honest, totally amazing. And Yang's support started to grow, as the Washington Post noted in May. More than 3,000 people came to a recent Yang rally in San Francisco, while 2,000 people came to see him in Los Angeles and 2,500 in Seattle. And it's not just people showing up to Yang rallies either. Yang, yes, Andrew Yang, was the first candidate to qualify for the first Democratic debate set for late June by racking up 65,000 individual donors by early March. He raised almost $1.8 million in the first three months of 2019, which is more than highly touted former San Antonio Mayor Julian Castro and in the same ballpark as former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper and Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Now that Andrew Yang has become a thing, especially online, is unquestionably true. Now, why that happened is a lot tougher to answer. Yang has lots and lots of ideas. More than 80 policy proposals are available on his website. He's for eliminating the penny, too expensive to make, and everyone hates him anyway, and paying college athletes. He's got thoughts on daylight savings time, he's pro, and partisan gerrymandering, he's anti. The Yang policy that has drawn the most attention by far, though, is his plan to have the government give $1,000 a month to every American citizen between the ages of 18 and 64. Yang calls it a freedom dividend and says it would be paid for by a value-added tax on the goods and services produced by American businesses. And Yang is, on this issue, practicing what he preaches. In January, he started giving a family in New Hampshire the monthly freedom dividend out of his own pocket and he expects to do the same shortly for a family in Iowa. Now, the theory behind Yang's proposal is his concern that our rapidly automating society will increasingly make human labor less and less relevant. Quote, 
Relying on the market is going to get more and more destructive as it zeroes out more and more people unless we come together and build a different kind of economy as fast as possible. Yang told The Verge for a profile entitled Andrew Yang is the candidate for the end of the world. He added, quote, and the first concrete step in that direction is to give everyone a thousand dollars a month in cash, end quote, which, well, okay, I like a thousand dollars as much as the next guy. Part of Yang's appeal isn't just the whole free money thing, though. It's the idea of a technocrat outsider who is willing to think way outside the box about how the government works and how it doesn't. People believe the government is broken and that establishment politicians have no clue how to fix it. It's that way of thinking that propelled Donald Trump to the White House. Now, that is not to say Andrew Yang is the next Donald Trump because, well, he almost certainly isn't. Yang may never rise higher than he is right now, bit of an oddity who has pushed his way onto the Democratic debate stage. But even getting this far is a major accomplishment for someone who started where Yang started, nowhere, in the 2020 race. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.